The build show today, we're going to be tackling an age old question. Do house wraps need to be permeable or is it okay for them to be non permeable? You know, if you've been watching my videos for any length of time, you've seen that for many, many years now, I've used this silver aluminum faced WRB on the outside. This is a peel and stick product by Polywall called AlumaFlash Plus. This aluminum facer means that my assembly is vapor non permeable. You cannot permeate or dry through this. So does that mean I've got failures happening on my houses? We're going to get into some really nerdy science today and I've got a good friend of mine, Christoph Irwin, a smart engineer, to walk us through this assembly and whether this will work, especially in the south. Today's video is sponsored by my friends at Polywall. Let's get going. All right, guys, special guest on the build show today, a super smart building scientist, Christoph Irwin. If you don't know Christoph, longtime friend of mine, incredible partner in, uh, in building great houses. His company, Positive Energy, does all my mechanical designs. He's a licensed professional engineer and also a really smart scientist and building science consultant. So Christoph, give us your perspective on this whole issue of vapor open, vapor closed for your WRB or house wrap on the outside of the house. All right, good, yeah. So I think of vapor up and vapor closed a little bit like, uh, like a lure, like it attracts fish, right? It's <laughs> something shiny that we all wanna talk about. I mean, it's not nothing, it's, it's an important consideration, but it's not the consideration. So yeah. we have, we're inside, right? Mm -hmm. This is an environmental separator. This is just glass, but up there, there's some walls. Mm -hmm. So environmental separation, it's, it's doing the big ones that we talk about a lot, rain, air, vapor, thermal control. Yep. Yep. It's also doing the ones that we don't talk about a lot, right? So sound, we want sound to be protected, you know, light, pests, fire, right? So this, this material that we're gonna choose to be our WRB, it's gonna serve us or not serve us in many ways. And so we're here to talk about, can I say the product? Yeah, Okay, sure. a, a Luma Flash from Polywall. Yep. Right, it is a product, and like all products, it has a range of characteristics, a range of physical properties yep. that, that benefit us. But um, what we want to talk about is vapor open, vapor closed. I want to be really clear to say that the primary benefit of uh, Polywall LumaFlash for you is, for, for people that use it, is that it supports your team with a successful strategy to implement a continuous air and water WRB. That's right, right? That's and air and water thing. are the most important for me. Right. And, and you know, a successful strategy in the sense that when you install it, it's continuous and contiguous, which means touching, mm -hmm. and that it has durability and workability and it's gonna stay there for a long time, right? Yeah, so that's right. This is a static system we're talking about. You're not changing your house wrap even though you might remodel your kitchen in 30 years, that's right? That's right. So yeah. this is a really important choice for the house. We're talking about decades or longer than it needs to work on the house. Absolutely, I mean, there, there, are, there are several things in the building industry where you guys making these decisions, I think your primary consideration is, um, I got one good chance to get this right, and it's either gonna serve me well or not serve me well right. forever after that. And you know, WRB is a big one, the air distribution system is a big one, That's you're never right. gonna change that out, but we're staying on WRB All for right. today. <laughs> now, let's, now let's get into uh, this vapor open, vapor close, because you guys spent a ton of time researching this for one of our clients. So mm -hmm. uh, Christoph and I have a mutual client. They were doing some uh, consulting with her in the building science side. Uh, very smart client, by the way. And we're thinking of you this. right now. Uh, and she said, hey, look, mold is my primary concern. I want, to decide, I want you to help me decide from a scientific perspective, what's the best WRB on the outside? And Matt's telling me that this Aluma Flash, he uses a lot, but I'm worried because I hear chatter on the internet that you need a vapor open assembly on the outside. So right. take it from there. Well, so to take it from there, I mean, this smart client, she recognized that it really is damp building materials and health, right? Yep. The strong correlation between damp buildings and health and that one of the aspects of a damp building is that it supports mold. Yep. Mold, you smell it, you see it, but mold, bacteria, viruses, there's all kinds of, um, living creatures that we can't see except mm -hmm. with microscopes that are in this space that affect our health, right? Yep. So 
That's just a little expansion there. We can talk about that maybe on a, on a future episode. Like you you could dig in a lot deeper. We actually did an analysis with Woofy 6.3, Woofy Pro. So define Woofy for us. So Woofy is the letters W-U-F-I, and I wish Kimberly Llewellyn were here. She could say it. She speaks German. It's Verma und Feuchtige Instructionar, and it means something like um, heat and moisture flow analysis. Okay. Right? So a lot of the things, like when we do a load calculation, we're not looking at the overlap, the simultaneous overlap of heat and moisture flow, but that is one of the things that uh, is very important to understand as materials. Mm -hmm. And what's really important to understand is um, <laughs> there's this funny quote that like all simulations or all modeling is wrong, but sometimes it's useful, right? <laughs> and I with like Woofy, that. you know, you can go, you could actually have a little more confidence because it is a, a computational mathematical simulation but it is also backed up by lots of empirical studies, which means like they built something, they put it out in the real world, and they took it apart and measured it. Mm. 25 years of these empirical st studies backed up, and these are done strategically and in focused ways to support the Woofy analysis. And these are backed up by laboratory analyses, climate simulations, right? So Woofy has had more than two decades of uh, predicting things and then being compared to the real world and then tweaked, predicting compared to the real world. So it's, it's really been optimized. And so what we're talking about then, Christoph, is a computer simulation of a wall assembly where right. his guys are putting in, in fact, who was the guy who did most of it? Siler, right? Skyler Swinford, Skyler. yeah. Sorry, Skyler. Awesome. Skyler Swinford, amazing. So, so what he's doing is he's putting in the entire wall assembly and we did it in two ways, or they did it in two ways. One with the Luma Flash Plus, in one with a vapor open WRB, a fairly standard uh, house wrap that gets used all the time, a very common one. Mm -hmm. And then the assembly behind that house wrap is a pretty typical two by six construction. On the outside of that is a um, masonry cladding, so we've got a reservoir cladding on the outside. And this simulation tells us what's happening with the wood in that assembly, meaning the, sh the sheathing and the wood framing in terms of moisture content of that wood over time over many, many years, right? 10 years, we did 10 years of study, yeah. Okay, so then what did the study tell you about what would happen with a, a vapor close, which the internet tells you that things are gonna severely <laughs> rot and have problems, right? <laughs> yeah. What happens? So bo both of the assemblies passed the test, right? They both passed our success criteria. And, but there is a subtlety to it, right? So, and I think we should just pause just very briefly to define it. So it was a reservoir cladding, it was brick, it was an air gap, it was a WRB, which changed, there's two different options, OSB, two by six cavity with um, low density bat and then gypsum. So fairly standard generic wall assembly. Yep. Uh, we looked at it in climate zones 1A, 2A, and 3A. Uh, very important. We I'm actually sorry. expanded it out a little bit from just, just our analysis. I mean, just, just the one for the client here. Um, and the big thing to take away from the analysis is, and you know, it doesn't really resolve the vapor open, vapor closed debate, but the big thing is that you have two valid um, assembly strategies. They both worked. Now, before we talk about maybe that, um, it is true that the vapor closed assembly kept the materials drier longer, mm -hmm. right? And, and frankly, to... And that's this chart right, right here, right? That, that's that this chart right here, yeah. You can You're seeing these peaks and valleys, peaks and valleys. Now, the peaks are happening in the summer when the rain comes and the humidity and, and the humidity and you've got a reservoir cladding that's going to hold that water up against the building a little bit and it's starting to peak up meaning there's a little bit more moisture accumulating in the sheathing and what's happening in the vapor open assembly is basically the same thing there's these peaks and valleys what's interesting from my perspective though is that the peaks are lower on the Luma Flash Plus exactly and, and, and it's a little bit hidden on the chart in the sense that this is about nine on the bottom here, and, and you just have to compare the scales. But on this chart here, here's, for instance, here's 10 across. It never gets above 10 never uh, gets above percent nine, moisture yeah. content, which is fantastic. And on the vapor open assembly, it's actually getting up uh, above 18% at some of the peaks. Yeah, and now that's 20% mm -hmm. is kind of a cause for concern. We don't want our moisture per, uh, content above 20%. So I would say, in this analysis, a Luma Flash does better uh, in these climate zones even than a vapor open system. Right, right. So there's another characteristic of it. You can see both of these start high because of the water of construction, and then they come down and they do this cycling that you referred to, this summer-winter cycling. But they both trend 
within a stable line, right? right. So it's not like it's right. gradually, you know, Over time. cycling up on, right. on either one. So it's very repeatable. It's also clear that when the vapor open assembly does do these um, high excursions to high moisture content, and this is moisture content by weight, they're incredibly short lived. They're like spikes. It's, it, you know, there's a weather simulation in this. Yeah, so this is climate zone 1A, this is Miami. This one is actually our climate zone right here. Mm. In, is this saying in Austin? Yeah, this is our climate zone right here in Austin. The moisture content. Generally speaking, the moisture content by weight is, is more stable and stays lower consistently relative to. That kind of troughs around 7%, it peaks at maybe 13%. Right, and then like down that. here, the vapor open is troughing around 8 and going up to. Actually, little spikes Slight, above 20. Slightly even. a few spikes above 20%. Yeah. yeah. So That's not staying there very long. Right. But ultimately, the point of the study, I would say, Christoph, is that both assemblies work, mm -hmm. right? That's right. But the Aluma Flash does not fail like everyone says it does. In fact, I would interpret these results as actually doing, it's doing a little better. But ultimately, the bottom line for me of, as a builder is I care about water and air infiltration. And water infiltration is really the number one. That's 80% of construction defect litigation is about water. And with Aluma Flash Plus and using their blue barrier system and their primers, including their new water-based primers, I can put this on and house wrap this building and you know just make a perfect water barrier on the outside, which, oh, by the way, is also a terrific air barrier and it's all about the details, right? We never see failures in the middle of a wall. We always see it at penetrations. And they've got, with the blue barrier, everything I need to detail those penetrations to make sure water's not gonna get in and air's not gonna get in. And generally speaking, air is a bigger transporter of moisture into our houses because it's hot, humid air leaking in in the south. And so we wanna do a really good job of air sealing. If we don't, we're gonna find mold growth on the inside of the house like I often do on remodels. Yeah. What did I miss on that? No, you said it right. I think just to stress it again, right? The main thing is it's gonna be a good air water WRB. After that, it's gonna, it's gonna handle details. Assemblies really fail in the field. After that, it's durable. It has a long-term track record. And then finally after that, you can get to this debate um, the debate is not nothing. I, I think that the dogma that's associated with the debate, like, you know, it could be like, you're crazy, it's got to be vapor open. And totally. you, know, you could say the same thing back. You know, to people with more, a more uh, sophisticated, nuanced understanding recognize that it really depends on what climate am I in? Mm -hmm. what, what cladding type do I have? What's the use and occupancy profile yeah. of a building? I mean, there's, there's so many factors that go into a decision on defining a WRB that aren't just vapor open, vapor closed. Yeah, for sure. Um, but what's yeah. interesting to me is that a lot of builders in the South, or in particularly in Austin, Texas, where I build, a lot of the upper end builders have chosen to use this product. We've been using it for more than a decade now, uh, and we only have recently gotten this Woofy analysis. Empirically, it made, it's made sense for me for years that I don't see a lot of perm failures on houses, but I see lots and lots and lots of water failures. Too many to, to possibly count. And I bet the perm failures I've seen in my lifetime, my 25 years of building, is less than I can count on one hand. Yeah. So if I can control bulk water and then control air well, I knew empirically that my houses were gonna be fine. And this debate about vapor open, vapor closed, myself and many other upper end builders in Austin have not worried about this. But this report is fantastic. And by the way, it's available on the Polywall website if you wanna go there. And they've called this now their A plus wall system, which I think this report really also confirms that. Now, talk to me really quick about, um, you guys did this in climate zones one, two, and three A, yeah, this kind you. of section of the south right here. Does that mean if you're above that line and uh, you know three B or in climate zone four that you'd have a failure with this? No, not at all. I mean, so frankly, as far as this analysis goes, I sound like a little like an attorney here or something. <laughs> these results are applicable to this assembly in these climate zones. Yep. Right. So in other climate zones, for other assemblies, for other use and occupancy profiles, for other materials, you would want to have someone like you, mm -hmm. someone like us advise you on how to get through that yep. or watch all the videos. I'm sure you'll figure it out. <laughs> um, but there's a number that came into my head. We were talking about the air versus the vapor diffusion. Um, I believe it was Building Science Corporation years yeah. ago had this, this analysis where they had a four by eight sheet of uh, sheetrock yep. and they put it between us and they have certain conditions across it. And so vapor diffusion over the course of, I think it was a heating season, 10 ounces of moisture would mm -hmm. go through. And then they put a one square inch hole 
and redid, redid the simulation, or maybe it was an experiment, 960 ounces, right? Yeah. So this just gives you a sense, right? So 10 ounces in, of vapor diffusion versus 1,000 roughly in air transported moisture. So that's huge. Yeah, that's I mean, huge. massive amount more happens with air transfer. Yeah. Chris, have any final thoughts on this? Yeah, I mean, I guess just to wrap it up, the fundamental, fundamental result of this analysis was that the vapor closed assembly in climate zones 1A, 2A, and 3A worked fine, right? So, and we've said it many times, it's not the primary consideration to choosing a WRB, but if you're thinking of taking a WRB off your list because it wouldn't work in a hot, humid climate, right, you're not making a decision that's, that's based on the latest science. Yeah. Christoph, I really appreciate your analysis and being on the video with me. I want to remind you, this is a sponsored video by my friends at Polywall, but this original study was paid for by our mutual client in Climate Zone 2A here, trying to figure out what to use on their specific house with mold as a particular concern and making sure that this vapor closed. Damp building materials. <laughs> would work. <laughs> uh, and then later, Polywall found out about it and said, hey, uh, positive energy, will you do a bigger study and extend this to some other zones? That's why this is climate zone 1, 2, and 3A. Right. And again, you can go to their site and see it. This report is 160 pages. <laughs> it's a massive Gripping. report with lots of nerdiness, <laughs> but you might enjoy that. I do want to thank those guys, though. We've been using them for a long time. A lot of upper-end builders like me have gone to this system, and I'm glad to see that this report confirms what I already had known kind of uh, from my gut and intuitively that this was gonna really work in my climate zone. Anyways, if you're not currently a subscriber to The Build Show, hit that subscribe button below. I do wanna remind you that Christoph's company, Positive Energy, has an office in San Antonio and they're doing projects really all over, not just in all the big Texas towns, yeah. but really all over the US. So if you, if you have a, a project that you're interested in them doing mechanical design or building consulting, fantastic firm. I've used them for over 10 years now on all my projects, great, great company. Guys, hit that subscribe button if you're not currently a subscriber. We've got new content every Tuesday and every Friday. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see you next time on The Build Show.